The Great Separation. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 33 of the King James Version says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. There is a division, a great division in the spirit world, sheep and goats, believers or unbelievers, those who are saved and those who are perishing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Paul here clearly divides the world into two separate distinct groups, those who are saved and those who are perishing. And this is what the Bible tells us, there are only two groups. And you and I can know which group we are in. Does that not make you think? I often wonder about this division. And I want you to think of this division as you live your life. Because the more this division is at the forefront of your mind, the more you will take your eyes off this world and place them on eternity. When you go into the classroom tomorrow, remember that God divides that classroom into two distinct groups. When you go into the office tomorrow, remember that God divides that office into two distinct groups. When you go into the factory tomorrow, remember that God divides that factory into two distinct groups. There is indeed an invisible line that we do not see that God sees. Now, do you want to hear a sobering thought? This same line, the same line that separates the perishing and those who are being saved, is also in every church. In every single church, this line separates the two groups. In your church, this line exists. On one side, there are those who are perishing, and there are those who are being saved. In your very own church. Isn't that a very sobering thought? Now, do you want to hear an even more sobering thought? An even more sobering thought is that this line of division exists not only in churches, but in families. A husband and wife are on two separate sides, a mother and son on two different sides. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. One side is being saved by the message of the cross, the other side is perishing. I want to ask you, which side are you going to be on? Which side are you on right now? Can you say that you are one of those that would be welcomed into the kingdom of God? Are you the tear in the church today, or are you the wheat? One day there will be a great separation, and everyone will know which side they belong to. Many people are claiming to be Christians, saying that they are part of the sheep, but they are not. If you look at their lives from the outside, they are not showing the characteristics of the sheep. If you look at what's inside of them, that's even worse. Who are you in the sight of the king? Who are you in the sight of God? Are you a sheep or a goat? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is such a wonderful verse because it tells us that during the time of Paul, when he wrote this letter to the Corinthians, there were men and women at that time who were perishing, but at the same time, there were people who also were not perishing. Isn't that wonderful? Two people at the same place have two different outcomes. Allow the word of God to be alive for you. And imagine a total of 40 people in one room. According to 1 Corinthians 1.18, in that room of 40 people, there is a line of division. 30 people on one side, and then a line of separation, and then another group of 10 people standing. The 30 are perishing, and the 10 are being saved. All are in the same room. And this is what this verse tells us, that whilst on the same planet there are people who are perishing and those who are being saved. So what exactly divides people? What divides the world is a message. And the message is the message of the cross. And the message of the cross is the message of Jesus Christ. It is all about him. It is all about our Lord Jesus. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem of Judah, who was raised in Nazareth, who turned water into wine, who healed the sick and raised the dead, who cured a woman with the issue of blood, who made the lame walk, who made the deaf hear, who gave sight to the blind, the Lord Jesus Christ, who walked on water, the Lord Jesus, who came to this earth for my sins and your sins, and went and died on a hill called Golgotha. Jesus didn't faint. He didn't pass out. He wasn't in a coma. He died and he rose again. And this message is the message of the cross. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is what separates the world. This historic event is what separates the world. It is a fact that he died. It is a fact that he rose again. And this message of the cross is what separates those who are being saved and those who are perishing. What divides the world is the message of the cross. And those who are being saved receive salvation and receive forgiveness. Those who are saved are forgiven. And if you are forgiven, aren't you glad you are forgiven? I just want to remind. When God forgave you of your sins the night you got saved, you were fully forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. That should make you shout from the rooftops. Your sins have been forgiven. God will never bring them and present them before you. God will never blackmail you with your sins. If your sins are forgiven, they are forgotten and they are paid for. And Christ paid the cost of sin for us because the wages of sin had to be paid. But because of Christ, you are forgiven. Aren't you glad your slate has been wiped clean and you are forgiven? Think of all the sins you have committed and know each and every one of them have been forgiven. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. And your home is in glory. Your citizenship is in heaven. Your name is in the Lamb Book of Life. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God to the day of redemption. You are forgiven. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a part of a holy nation. You're his, and he is yours. I mean, your mother and father may not forgive you for the stuff you did wrong. I mean, your husband or wife may not forgive you for something you did wrong. But aren't you glad you are serving a God that doesn't forgive you because other people have forgiven you? Our God says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Your family may hold your past against you for the rest of your life, but bless God, you are forgiven. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You are forgiven, you are blessed. Romans chapter 4, verse 7 says, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. The message of the cross is what separates the world today. Which side are you on? The people who are blessed are not those who have billions and billions in their bank. The person who is truly blessed is someone whose sins are forgiven. You are blessed beyond measure. And you will only understand how blessed you are on the day of judgment when you see those whose sins are not forgiven and they are being judged. How are you going to sleep tonight knowing that your sins have been forgiven? How are you going to sleep at night knowing that you're saved? You are saved and not perishing. Psalm 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Focus on that phrase, for thou art with me. You are not alone. A child of God is never alone. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee.